uh, discuss today about flexible ureteroscopy, our momentary basic step for residents and beginners. Uh, my name is Amelia Petropaolo, and I am an associate specialist. I work in United Kingdom, and this is my hospital and where I currently work. So this um, presentation is to introduce flexible ureteroscopy and kidney stone treatment to our residents and trainees. And of course, we need to underline that um, learning through tips and tricks from experts is much better to come across tricks and tricks because we are in Halloween time and therefore trying to prevent uh, to learn from uh, bad experience and to prevent complications. So we start from our patient preparation for our flexible ureteroscopy. And clearly it's very important to study our patient, make sure we know about the preoperative urine analysis and make sure we can prevent uh, urine infection and treat if there is one. And we normally give prophylactic antibiotics beforehand, uh, in, in particular during the induction of the anesthesia. It's very important the position as we are gonna see and um, the be read in theater with the fluoroscopy, the X-ray um, team, uh, contrast, and all the equipment we need. As you can see, this is the lithotomic position, and uh, the patient will need to be comfortable and positioned uh, in this way in order to be comfortable with the patient, but also for the surgeon. Uh, we normally use a surgic surgical drape for to maintain sterility, and uh, it's very important to position the C-arm in the correct place in order to identify and uh, show the kidney area. Uh, this is uh, the equipment. Clearly, before starting the procedure, we need to make sure all the equipment is available. And uh, the equipment includes a guide wire, a ureteric catheter, a ureteric laxa sheath most of the time, a port seal that will um, allow us to uh, insert the instruments in the in the flexible ureteroscope and the basket for extraction device. Irrigation is very important and the postoperative post drainage such as stent. Also the energy source uh, to treat the stone is a, a paramount important. We're gonna discuss about this later. After having done the final checks, we can finally set up our patient and we can start our procedure. As you can see, the position in theater of all the instruments is uh, very important, in particular in small environments, in order for the surgeon to be able to see the endoscopic screen, but also the radiology um, screens at the same time. And the procedure is a step by step, and it's very important to follow all the steps in order to prevent complications or unexpected um, findings. So first of all, we've discussed already about planning and positioning. Second is to do a rigid cystoscopy and cannulation of ureteric corifice with a guide wire. And um, um, after that, it's very important to insert the rigid ureteroscope, navigate the ureter and negotiate um, the access to the ureter. And after that, there will be the proper uh, stone treatment. Our flexible ureteroscope can be inserted through an access sheet, as we will see, or um, via a guide wire, and it can be railroaded uh, with X-ray guidance. The fragmentation of the stone can be done with, of course, laser or other power devices, and the mode can be selected to have a fragmentation, dusting, dusting of popcorning and dusting te technique, and um, it's very important to have a good vision thanks to irrigation and uh, to choose the best way of drainage after the surgery. We're going to discuss about the access sheath as the first step. So this is very important. It's a very useful aid in terms of um, flexible ureterorhinoscopy because it will allow us to introduce our flexible ureteroscope and to remove uh, bas uh, the um, fragments with the basket going in and out of the ureter without damaging it. Also, will uh, um, improve the vision, allowing a good irrigation and reduce the intradinal pressure, um, reducing complication of sepsis. So you can see many, many sizes of access sheets we can use. And clearly, it's very important to avoid 
ureteric trauma, an access sheath uh, being uh, inserted under fluoroscopic guidance or, an access, or on a guide wire can clearly cause these sort of problems. How to prevent that? It's very important to test our ureteric compliance first. And in our center is a very important step-by-step -step procedure to do a rigid ureteroscopy first on um, on two guide wires in order to test the compliance of the ureter and make sure we can understand if the ureter is tight or is very wide and compliant and to select the size of the access sheet according to the wideness of the ureter. This is very important to prevent tears or traumas to our ureteric mucosa. And in fact, we have analyzed our own data and we saw that we very, very rarely found any intra intraoperative complication and none of them have been discussed have been uh, identified in our case series with a good stone free rate uh, even in large and multiple stones thanks to this technique in absence uh, absence of uh, access sheet the, as i said earlier the um, ureteroscope can be inserted on a guide wire and this can be railroaded under fluoroscopic guidance. It's very important to respect the compliance of the UO. And in the more modern ureteroscope, it's possible to navigate um, backwards the ureter um, under vision in order to prevent traumas when inserting the flexible ureteroscope and reaching the uh, renal cavities. The laser is. Um, is of course the most important source of um, stone treatment. Uh, it's very important to know how to select the settings and to play with them in order to have a best result of some fragmentation and ablation. And uh, clearly we can have a dusting effect with a low, a low energy and high pulse. Other we run for the fragmentation, so a high energy and a low pulse and um, a low frequency, sorry. and the popcorning technique or pop dusting can be obtained with a high net energy and low frequency. Uh, the pulse duration is very important also to um, distinct between dusting, uh, obtaining dusting or fragmentation. And there are several papers that you can um, check that will describe how the stone can be uh, better managed with one or the other techniques. Uh, again, setting the, the right parameters for stones for laser fragmentation is very important. And uh, we have analyzed our case series with the high power laser and seeing that the post pop dusting technique can achieve ex excellent stone free rate also for large stones with a very reasonable operating time and no complication rate. This is uh, possible to be done also in uh, pediatric cases. And the, the, um, to learn how to handle the flexible ureteroscope is the most difficult part. And this is my experience. So in, in, learn to navigate the, the um, collecting system is, um, is very important. And sometimes hands-on training can learn, can uh, help for that. So it's very important to uh, must, um, mainly uh, manage them up and down uh, control and then uh, also rotating the wrist right and left can uh, help to navigate the system and orientate between different calluses. There is also a more fine movement that can be done with the other hand, with the left hand, to rotate the tip of the scope in order to orientate better into the cavities. And it's very important you remember about the digital ureteroscopes where you don't have an indication of your position in the, in the space. So the bubbles can help you to understand um, the position in the renal cavities, if it's an upper pole or lower pole. And the same thing is better to remember there is a different deflection set up for European or American scopes. Um, there are a lot of publication and studies about um, tips and tricks of flexible ureteroscopy that I can suggest and about basic ureteroscopy to advanced ureteroscopy. And this is very interesting to learn, in particular in the COVID pandemic time when hands-on training are more difficult to attend. 
And um, this is a very important step-by-step -step, uh, training model um, created by the European Associati Association of Urology Section. And they created a four steps learning tool to learn how to perform a stone treatment from the flexible cystoscopy to rigid cystoscopy and guide wire placement rigid ureteroscope in place of the over access sheath, and finally, flexible ureteroscope navigation. This is a very interesting curriculum, and it goes through different steps in order to gain the final confidence and competency to perform a full stone treatment. Clearly, doing a semi-rigid ureteroscopy is of paramount importance, as mentioned before, because that gives us the idea of the compliance in our urinary uh, system. And uh, it's important to learn how to overcome the difficulty of bladder neck, um, for example, um, of a higher rigid bladder neck, or a difficulty within the ureter, which could be represented by stricture or um, torturous ureter, or a stuck basket, for example, or a stone which is uh, uh, completely impacted and uh, a situation where the view is very poor. Also, the ULIS um, training pathway is very important. This is made of three basic steps to go from the basic cystoscopy and, and rigid ureteroscopy to then be able to perform full procedures. This is a sort of fellowship period that will allow the trainee to gain the full experience. See, there are a lot of simulators that have been created to help the trainees and residents to um, learn how to use the flexible ureteroscopes in a very similar environment to a urinary tract system. And we can see how with them, with our uh, flexible ureteroscope, we can navigate um, different anatomies and find and grab uh, stones in different areas. This is very, very helpful, I can say and that I've proved in myself in the several courses. And um, of course, the, the training is a modular uh, training. It goes from basic skills to the complete procedures. And this is made uh, mainly possible to do through hands-on. It's very important, the role of mentoring, clearly, because uh, it's impossible to learn without the, the right uh, train, trainer. And therefore, you can learn quicker and also learn from the experience on someone who's very experienced and therefore not going towards uh, um, preventing complications. The new generation of flexible ureteroscopes um, are, are more and more uh, technological and they went from fiber optic to now digital scopes. Uh, clearly, they have different um, um, benefits and the, the view is very improved, as you can see, between uh, fiber optic and digital scopes. And also, this allows us to save much time during the procedure. Irrigation system is very important to mention because clearly, to have a good view, we need to have a good washout of the cavities and, uh, and irrigation. Uh, it's very important to select a type of irrigation that will not increase too much the or too suddenly the intrarenal pressure and therefore would, would prevent episode of urosepsis or rupture of the calyces. Then, of course, there are some limitations related to the reusable flexible ureteroscopes. For example, they're very expensive. To repair them is very expensive and they're very easy to damage. And they can be infected because clearly they need to be decontaminated all the time. And they're also very heavy. So new digital flexible ureteroscopes have been introduced recently to the market. There are several brands that I'm gonna, not going to discuss about, but they are very convenient in terms of maneuverability and safety because they are, mm, they are very light and they are very easy to maneuver. And uh, at the moment, we are uh, it's proven that their use is um, is. Uh, suggested in case of very large stones in the lower pole or in difficult anatomical cases like urinary diversion or abnormal anatomy. And very important in patients with previous urosepsis because they are essentially dispossible and they don't get re-decontaminated. And to conclude, I just wanted to show you a video of how we suggest the step-by-step -step approach to flexible ureteroscopy. And as I said, the first step is to do um, 
rigid ureteroscopy to navigate and um, test the compliance of the ureter, we normally use a safety guide wire and a um, working guide wire to, um, to go through all our ureters. As you can see, this ureter is very narrow and therefore we are uh, supposed not to select a very wide access sheet by a, uh, probably a 9.5 French. And after inserting the access sheet, then we can safely perform a flexible ureteroscopy and the access sheet would allow us to remove even large size of stones uh, through it. And as you can see at the end, uh, we can navigate and check our ureter backwards going out with, uh, with our access sheet and make sure there are no damages as you could see yourself. This is our last video and it just shows how the, the different view, first of all, of the digital ureteroscope. This is a disposable one. And um, we use this type of scope because this case was um, a difficult uh, a difficult case with a patient with previous urosepsis. And you can see how uh, nice and uh, is the view with a very, very clear view and it's easy to navigate all the all the cavities, uh, see the stone and then treat it with laser, obtaining a very good fine dust that will then wash out with the um, aid of the access sheet. And this was my last slide. So thank you very much for this opportunity and looking forward for the MDT discussion. Thanks a lot.